installation, you're going to need a rubber mallet, an electric drill, a hammer, a step ladder, a handsaw, a spirit level and a wrench. Begin by laying out the floor bearers on your base and space them evenly apart. Lay down the base logs on the front and rear bearers so that the cutout hangs over the edge. You're going to need to screw these logs to the bearers, remembering to pre-drill all the holes preventing splitting. Line up your first logs at the corners and tap together using a rubber mallet to prevent damage to the timber. You now have the basic frame and can start to build up the cabin walls. Once you are three logs high, begin to insert the window logs on the left and right hand side of the cabin. Continue to build up the walls until you are around one third of the window height. If you loosen the framing on the window kits with the screwdriver slightly, they can be slid neatly into position with ease and they can be tightened back up after. Install all four window kits and re-tighten the bottom framing before starting on the walls again. The front corners of this cabin are quick to construct, simply slotting the log into the window frame and tapping together with a mallet. The rear logs of the cabin can now be installed, alternating between the back and the sides. You'll find that they actually go up pretty quickly once you get going. Tap in the final log above the window frame to complete the surround. The final logs either side of the door frame can easily slide into place with very little effort. Make sure that you go back to retighten all of the window framing to secure the kits in place. The first roof beam goes across the front of the cabin and allows you to install the apex pieces. These panels consist of several pre-assembled logs and have cutouts to allow you to easily install the roof beams with even spacing. Use the mallet to tap the left and right beams in place before screwing them into the apex panel and securing them in place. Ensure the screw head is flush with the log to prevent it snagging the next logs. The final apex pieces need to be tapped into place before the central roof beam can be installed. Make sure to tap the sides of the log to keep it level and prevent it from sticking at the join. You then need to screw down through the beam into the apex logs to secure it in place. Next you'll want to install the door frame. Start by slotting the framing over the foundation log. You then need to remove the rear board from the top and side framing pieces so you can slot them in place covering the side logs. Once the framing is slotted into the doorway, replace the boards on the back of each piece and secure with screws. The next part to tackle is the floor but it's pretty straightforward once you get going. Begin at one end of the room and place the boards up against the wall, perpendicular to the bearers beneath. The boards need to be secured with nails into the bearers below. Make sure that the boards are pushed tightly together to prevent any movement and fix them in place. Once you have reached the other end of the room, you may be left with a gap smaller than the width of your boards. This will require one to be cut down to size. Place a board within the gap and mark the end so you know how much you'll need to cut away. 
Use a handsaw or electric jigsaw to trim the board to the correct size and place within the gap. It can be a tight fit so you may need to knock the board into place. Secure the last board with nails using the existing boards as a guide. Your cabin is really starting to take shape. Time to start on the roof. The roof is very similar to the floor. Begin at one end of the cabin and align your board up with the centre of the apex. Make sure that the tongue of the board is facing into the cabin so you have a flat face for felting. Secure the board with nails into the roof beams and side logs. Repeat this across the length of the roof, ensuring that each board is flush at the end and locked securely into the previous board before nailing into place. When you reach the end of the roof, you'll be left with a gap, requiring you to cut down a board to fit in the same manner as the floor. Mark out the required size and cut away the excess using a handsaw or electric jigsaw. Don't worry about the rough appearance though, this will be covered by the felt and fascia boards. Repeat this for the other side of the roof, ensuring that the boards are flush at the end and nailed at the top, middle and bottom. The roof trims need to be installed underneath the roof edge at the front and back of the cabin. These allow you to affix the roofing felt and install the fascia boards. These should be screwed in the middle and both ends, making sure you pre-drill to prevent splitting. When felting the roof, there are two ways you can do this, either measuring the length of the roof with a tape measure and then cutting the felt accordingly, or placing the felt on the roof itself and rolling it out to the correct length. If you're doing it this way, tack down the end of the felt before rolling it out to prevent any movement. Try not to pull on the felt too much as it may tear. Always make sure to allow approximately 2 inches of overhang to allow you to tack the felt down easily and create an effective water runoff. Tack your first sheet down at approximately 6 inch intervals to ensure it's securely held to the roof and repeat this for the second strip, allowing the felt to overlap by at least 3 to 4 inches. For this cabin you will need five lengths of felt, two each side and one central cabin strip. Once the felt is secure, cut down the centre of the apex strip. This will allow you to fold it down for the front and rear fascia boards without creasing the felt. Use the fascia board to apply pressure to the felt and slide it down over the side, preventing wrinkles. Always remember to pre-drill your fascia boards and finials before screwing them to the cabin as this will prevent the wood from splitting. Screw the fascia on the ends of the roof beams to the centre and ends of the board. Repeat this for both sides of the cabin. The front and back fascias are installed in exactly the same way, making sure that the felt is kept flat and securing the boards at each end and centre of the fascia. Don't worry if you have felt peeking out from under the fascias, this can easily be cut away with a knife. Once the excess felt has been removed, you can now attach the finials to cover the fascia join at the front and rear apex. The cabin doors are easily installed, simply slotting the hinges down onto the frame. To install the lock, insert the tumbler into the opening and fix in place using a large screw into the front plate. This will then allow you to affix the front and rear face plates to the lock before installing the handles.
The inside handle was secured and tightened using a small Allen key to prevent any movement. The doors can be adjusted with an Allen key if they aren't quite sitting correctly. The floor trims are very straightforward, placing the wider edge flush to the floor and going around the inside of the room, nailing in place in the middle at both ends. You may need to cut down several pieces to get a snug fit, but we'll leave the floor of your cabin with a professional finish. When installing the storm bracing, you'll need to affix them to the top log board and run them down both sides of the cabin. Begin by lining up the bracing and drilling through the cabin wall to insert the bolt. Hand tighten the nut whilst you align the bottom of the bracing. Use a spirit level to make sure it's level. Once the bracing is secure, tighten both bolts with a wrench. Repeat this for all four bracing strips. The final thing for your cabin is the small door bolts. Line the top bolt up with the framing hole on the left hand door and lock the bolt to keep it nicely aligned. Screw in and repeat at the bottom. And that's it. Your log cabin is complete. Thank you. For